Cameron Hepburn. I'm a fellow at Oxford University and a director of two companies working in the environmental space, Climate Bridge and Vivid Economics. And this is my 2020 vision. Climate change is a really long-term problem. We know that. And we also know that it requires a lot of investment. Getting from where we are today to a low-carbon economy is going to require hundreds of billions, if not trillions, in investment. What that means is that we need to find the right set of incentives to shift large amounts of capital from dirty investments to clean investments. And if you think about where that capital is and where it has to come from and to go to, it actually comes back to all of us. We all save uh, and we have pensions and our funds go into pension funds. And those pension funds have liabilities over several decades. As we retire, uh, they need to deliver a return to us so that we can live happily ever after. So these pension funds have large amounts of money and it needs to go into assets that are very long-lived. And long-lived assets are things like wind farms, uh, concentrated solar plants, uh, nuclear power stations and the like. And so the real challenge for us and my 2020 vision is where we get a world where government cooperates with the private sector and the pension funds that have all of our money and redirects it towards low carbon investment so that we can have a low carbon economy. What we need now is another revolution, a low carbon revolution, and by 2020 we will be well on the way to having had that revolution. The ideas are coming forth, there's an amazing burst of innovative activity, and I'm very confident that we're going to get there. But the other important piece about revolutions is that social structures have to change as well. And we need new ways of governing ourselves that are appropriate for the set of challenges that we face. And we had that innovation in the Industrial Revolution just beforehand, and we need similar uh, innovations and revolutions in the way we govern ourselves now, not least at the international level, to deal with international problems like climate change. One of the things critics say about renewable technologies is that they're intermittent. They don't work all the time, uh, the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. And that's true. But that's not an insoluble problem. What we need to overcome inter intermittency is developments in battery technology, smarter management of power across our grids, and a greater use of IT across the board within the energy sector. We've seen what information technology and clever ideas can do in computing. I have no doubt that we will be able to manage uh, energy and intermittent energy from renewables across our grids and across our batteries in cars and batteries in homes in a way that allows us to go very low carbon by 2020 and ultimately run on a zero carbon economy by 2050. But we want to be focused on minimising the net costs to society of dealing with climate change. And offsetting is actually really important in this respect because it allows us to reduce emissions at the point where it is cheapest to do so. Carbon offsetting has been given a bad name uh, by some in the press and some commentators. They argue that you know, it's about shirking your responsibility. I disagree. If you carbon offset, you're paying someone to reduce emissions on your behalf. I didn't create this pullover that I'm wearing, nor this shirt. I paid someone to create them for me. And offsetting is no different. People are better at creating pullovers and shirts than I am, and others are better at reducing emissions than I am. So I pay others to do what they do best, and I do what I do best. We just call it trade, and it's been very beneficial over the last 200 years for human civilization. We need a carbon price, and we need that carbon price to propagate throughout the economy so that we're not reliant on individuals having uh, intensive, detailed knowledge of the carbon content of all of the things they're purchasing, nor are we relying on their goodwill. We're just relying on them making sensible decisions at their point of purchase with their own wallets. So carbon pricing is a core part of the solution to climate change. And we can achieve that carbon pricing by cap and trade schemes upstream on big companies. We could achieve it by a cap and trade scheme on individuals and personal carbon allowances. It would be very complex and very costly to administer. So I remain unconvinced that a personal carbon allowance is the way to go. Carbon pricing is absolutely critical and is required to get us through to 2020.